Susan was extremely concerned upon noticing the unusual holes in her baby's nose. She was unaware of the potential danger or the cause behind them. However, she swiftly uncovered the truth after seeking immediate medical attention the same day. The doctor's examination revealed a much graver situation than she had initially anticipated. Disturbed by the doctor's sudden realization, he urgently contacted the police. Leaving Susan behind without any explanation, following numerous tests on her child. The doctor abruptly summoned the authorities and hastily exited. Leaving Susan alone in the room. As the severity of the situation dawned on her. Susan became increasingly anxious. Her distress heightened when she discovered that the doctor had locked the door. Prompting her to forcefully pound on it in a desperate attempt to open it. After several forceful attempts, the door finally gave way, exposing her to the medical staff who were intent on confining her within. As the doctor relayed his findings to Susan, she felt faint and collapsed to the ground, unconscious. The gravity of the situation and the doctor's discovery left her bewildered. Upon awakening, she was oblivious to the events that had transpired as her immediate concern was tending to her crying baby. It seemed like an ordinary morning for Susan. She rose from her bed and shuffled towards her baby's room, intending to attend to him. As she busied herself preparing his milk, the routine didn't raise any alarms until the moment she was poised to pour it into his cup. It was then that she was on the verge of a shriek. Startled by what she was about to discover, Susan, a single parent who had recently turned 40, had encountered her fair share of unsuccessful dates. Yet, she held hope that this time would be different. She had meticulously readied herself for the upcoming rendezvous, putting in considerable effort as it marked their inaugural in-person meeting. Her earnest desire was for everything to transpire smoothly. However, Reality failed to align with her expectations, meeting the man through an online platform. She knew it was a long shot. The date unfolded unremarkably. Marred by his apparent disinterest in discussing her baby. A remnant of a past relationship. Susan's feelings about the potential of seeing him again remained uncertain in the wake of their encounter the morning after her date. Susan made a chilling discovery concerning baby Roy. It appeared that Roy was suffering from discomfort in his nose. Evident in his incessant scratching. Upon closer inspection, Susan was horrified by what she found. Tiny holes had formed inside Roy's nose. Causing him distress, panic seized her as she speculated about the cause of her baby's ailment. She gingerly examined the tiny apertures. Realizing they were burrowing into his delicate skin tentatively pressing on them. Roy's cries pierced the air. Confirming that something was gravely amiss, uncertain of the origin of this troubling condition. Susan's mind raced. Could it be an insect bite or an unwelcome visitor that had somehow infiltrated her baby's nasal passage overnight? However, her experience failed to offer any precedent for such an occurrence, turning to the internet for guidance. Susan scoured through information. Only to arrive at a disquieting conclusion, this wasn't the work of any ordinary bug. The situation seemed to portend something far more ominous. Leaving her fraught with worry for her baby's well-being, the longer Susan scrutinized Roy's nose. The more perplexed she became. These were not just mere tiny holes. There was an inexplicable presence nestled within them. Despite her focused gaze, she couldn't discern the exact nature of what lay inside those minuscule openings. Yet, an undeniable conviction persisted that something foreign resided within, the rigid texture of the holes and their contents puzzled her. Susan felt compelled to take action and formulated a plan. Contemplating using tweezers to extract whatever lurked in her baby's nose. She retrieved them from the bathroom. However, as she poised herself for this impromptu procedure, a wave of hesitation washed over her. Uncertain about the potential consequences, 
She grappled with the fear that her intervention might exacerbate the situation, Susan harbored an aversion to seeking medical assistance. Preferring self-reliance in dealing with issues. Rarely did she resort to visiting doctors unless faced with dire circumstances. Despite her reluctance, the gravity of her baby's health predicament nudged her to reconsider. Acknowledging the severity of the situation, she made the daunting decision to contact a doctor, securing a semi-emergency appointment at the doctor's office for that very afternoon. Susan was informed that there were prior patients scheduled ahead of baby Roy. However, assurances were given that they would attend to her by day's end at the latest. In the interim, the doctor advised Susan to take preliminary steps to alleviate the situation, the doctor urged Susan to contemplate any recent deviations from their usual routine that might have triggered this distressing condition. Emphasizing the importance of these details in diagnosing the issue. The doctor hoped to gain insights into what might be wrong, reflecting on the past week. Susan searched for any deviations in their activities. Recalling a recent hike through the forest with Roy. She considered if her baby might have come into contact with something unusual, perhaps a mushroom or contaminated moss during their excursion. However, as she ruminated further, doubts crept in. The hiking trail was frequented by many. And if such environmental factors were at play, others might have reported similar experiences. Dismissing this possibility, Susan continued to grapple with the mystery shrouding her baby's condition, Susan struggled to pinpoint any significant deviations from her usual routine. She led a rather unremarkable life. Marked by occasional hikes and visits to the local coffee shop. Working from home kept her mostly indoors. Contributing to what she considered a rather uneventful existence. It seemed perplexing that anything out of the ordinary could have occurred in her otherwise mundane life. A sudden realization struck Susan. There was one recent anomaly, the date she had gone on the night before. Engaging in conversations with a man she had met online. Susan had finally agreed to meet him in person. Hopeful for a positive outcome. She anticipated that this date might change her luck in finding a compatible partner, however. The date hadn't unfolded as expected. Susan sensed an underlying discomfort throughout the evening. The man's demeanor was peculiar. Oscillating between disinterest and sporadic gestures that indicated some level of investment in her. She couldn't shake off the feeling that he harbored an unspoken disdain toward her status as a single mother, reflecting on their interactions. Susan questioned the motives behind the man's pursuit. Reviewing their conversations. She started noticing subtle cues suggesting his lack of genuine interest. Doubts about his intentions crept into her thoughts. Could this man, who appeared disinterested in her, have any connection to the distressing situation her baby faced, pondering over the possibility? Susan found it hard to establish a direct link. Their interaction hadn't escalated physically. And both had maintained radio silence since the previous night. The absence of any communication from him further perplexed her. If he were involved, wouldn't he have attempted to reach out, with a mixture of concern and uncertainty? Susan proceeded to Roy's appointment. Driving to the doctor's office. She grappled with these unsettling thoughts but found herself unable to make any conclusive connections between the date and her baby's inexplicable condition. The mystery surrounding Roy's ailment lingered. Leaving her in a state of distress and bewilderment, fortunately. The holes on Roy's nose hadn't exhibited drastic changes. Although they had slightly enlarged and become more conspicuous. Susan found some solace in the fact that the situation hadn't escalated significantly, arriving at the doctor's office. Susan took a moment in her car to muster any additional insights. Despite her best efforts. She couldn't conjure up any further explanations. With a steadying breath to calm her jittery nerves. She entered the doctor's office. Accompanied by her baby. And proceeded to register at the front desk anticipating a lengthy wait. Susan braced herself for the usual clinic ordeal. However. Fate had other plans. 
as they settled in the waiting room. Baby Roy unwittingly became the center of attention. The stark visibility of the nasal holes garnered an unprecedented level of curiosity among the other patients initially oblivious to the growing interest around her. Susan eventually sensed the mounting curiosity of the fellow patients. Their glances and covert conversations made it apparent that her baby had become a subject of widespread interest. The children present were particularly intrigued. Though their parents restrained them from approaching Roy amidst the aura of concern and inquisitiveness pervading the room, the doctor emerged to call in the next patient. Instantly, a unanimous decision resonated among those waiting, Roy's condition warranted immediate attention. It seemed that everyone, including Susan, was more invested in understanding and addressing the peculiar anomaly afflicting the baby, while Susan felt a tad uncomfortable with the sudden spotlight on her baby. She expressed her gratitude nonetheless. However, the doctor, realizing the gravity of Roy's condition, disagreed with any notion of delay once in the examination room. The doctor's shock was palpable. His professional experience had never encountered such a baffling case. This was beyond any routine medical scenario he had encountered or read about in his extensive training. The unprecedented nature of Roy's condition perplexed the doctor. Leaving him at a loss for diagnosis or treatment options, understanding the urgency of the situation. The doctor swiftly rearranged his schedule, diverting his waiting patients to other healthcare providers. Baby Roy required immediate and undivided attention prompting the doctor to pledge a dedicated effort toward uncovering a cure for this perplexing and unprecedented anomaly, the doctor. Alarmed by the peculiar numbness in Roy's nose, ordered a battery of tests for Susan. As they awaited the test results, he meticulously scrutinized every detail of the infant's nasal condition. Astonishingly, despite earlier distress, Roy had ceased crying and his nose had become entirely numb. Even under pressure, Roy displayed no signs of discomfort, which troubled the doctor immensely, signaling a concerning development, however. The initial test results yielded disappointment. None of the tests conducted had provided any useful leads. Faced with this setback, the doctor contemplated further tests that required Susan's authorization. Aware of the time and commitment this would demand from Susan, he grappled with the decision, seeking a breakthrough. The doctor decided to seek assistance from the medical community. He posted images of Roy's perplexing nasal condition on a specialized medical forum, hopeful that another medical professional might have encountered a similar case. However, he realized that the response might take some time, leaving them in a limbo of uncertainty feeling overwhelmed by the situation. Susan decided to take a breather. She excused herself to the bathroom, allowing Roy to rest. Meanwhile, in the doctor's anticipation, a private message arrived on the forum, filled with a mix of anticipation and dread. He eagerly opened it, hoping for a breakthrough. To his dismay, the message brought devastating news that would necessitate urgent action, another doctor on the forum had encountered a similar case before. The dire implications of this discovery weighed heavily on the doctor. If this diagnosis were correct, swift action was imperative to avert potential complications for everyone involved. Particularly Susan and her baby just as the doctor processed this distressing information. The awaited test results arrived. The chilling revelation confirmed the worst fears. Roy's doctor, reeling from the gravity of the situation, swiftly exited his office. Setting in motion a series of urgent actions, Susan returned from the restroom, unaware of the unfolding chaos. However, upon her return, it was evident that Roy's nasal condition had worsened. The inexplicable holes were now spreading beyond the initial confines of his nose. Signaling a distressing turn of events. Susan's anxiety skyrocketed as she grappled with the urgency to find the doctor and get some answers. 
However, upon her return to the office, an unsettling realization dawned on her, the doctor was conspicuously absent. Panic started to set in. And Susan frantically contemplated her next move. As she weighed her options. A sudden noise behind her jolted her senses. She spun around. Only to realize that the door she had entered through had been locked from the outside. Confining her and her baby within the room. The situation took a harrowing turn as Susan overheard the doctor's conversation with others. Mentioning the involvement of the police. Her pleas for an explanation went unanswered. Adding to her mounting fear and confusion, desperate for clarity. Susan sought answers from the medical staff. But they remained tight-lipped and instructed her to stay calm until the authorities arrived. This lack of transparency amplified her apprehension. Susan's mind raced with worries about the severity of her baby's condition. The staff's alarming reaction to Roy's nose intensified her concern. Could this be a matter of life and death? A tumultuous storm of emotions engulfed Susan, fear, anxiety, and eventually, frustration. With the staff's silence prevailing, her apprehension spiraled into anger. Feeling cornered and abandoned, Susan resorted to kicking at the locked door. Driven by an overwhelming need for escape and information, despite the doctor's pleas to stop, Drowned out by her own desperate attempts. Susan persisted until the lock finally gave way. Swinging the door wide open, the sudden commotion sent shockwaves through the room. The people outside recoiled in surprise. And Susan's doctor took a step back. Visibly alarmed by the unexpected turn of events. Gasping for breath after her efforts. Susan stood firm. Resolute in her determination to demand the truth about the unsettling situation surrounding her and her baby, with tension in the air. Her doctor instructed others to step away and cautioned Susan to maintain a distance. Revealing a sense of grave concern. The gravity of the situation was palpable. And Susan was unwavering in her demand for answers. Refusing to retreat until she received a satisfactory explanation. She held firm. Determined to unravel the truth despite the mounting tension in the room point three armed officers entered the building and immediately noticed Susan. The doctor singled her out and began shouting. Alarming everyone. All three officers swiftly drew their pistols. Aiming them at Susan. Causing her to feel faint. Reacting quickly. Susan raised her hands in surrender as the police shifted their focus towards her. Tears welled in her eyes as she pleaded with them to explain the situation, observing the severity of the injuries on Susan's baby. The officers instructed her to keep her distance. One officer calmly assured Susan they would disclose everything but emphasized the immediate need for her and the baby to be isolated, agreeing to their terms. Susan asserted she wouldn't hesitate to demand answers. Driven by fear and frustration at the lack of information, Retreating into the doctor's office. The door closed behind her. She watched as the staff entered. Equipped with heavy cleaning materials. Meticulously sanitizing every surface, floors. Walls. And doors. Eventually. The doctor approached Susan. Offering an apology for his prior silence. He explained the unprecedented situation a case involving a severe flesh-eating virus that necessitated unfamiliar protocols. However, there was more to discuss, delving into Susan's recent activities. The doctor learned she had taken a hike and gone on a date the preceding night, fortunately for Susan. The ill-fated date she had experienced hadn't triggered the alarming condition. Instead, it seemed more plausible that her baby might have come into contact with an infected plant during their outdoor hike. The exact plant species remained a mystery, leaving Susan uncertain about how to assist. She recounted to both the police and her doctor the path they had taken and any notable observations, hoping it might aid their investigation. However, her primary concern centered on the treatment plan, 
would they be able to counteract the virus threatening to erode her baby's nose? Or was the damage irreversible, gratefully? The hospital possessed the necessary medication. But it entailed confining the baby to isolation for an extended period. The involvement of the police stemmed from their need to inquire about Susan's hike. Yet, their panic upon seeing her outside the isolation room compounded the doctor's own distress, resulting in a chaotic situation. Moreover, preventing further infections became a pressing concern, subsequently. Susan and Roy were safely transferred to a more advanced hospital. Here, they could both undergo isolation and receive specialized treatment to combat the virus relentlessly consuming Roy's nose. Thankfully, the medication managed to halt the virus's progression. And after a few days, signs of reversal emerged. However, the mystery surrounding the infected plant lingered, the officers diligently cordoned off the trail to prevent others from encountering the potentially harmful plant. Through extensive search efforts, they identified a non-native plant species in the area. Upon testing, it was confirmed to be the source of Susan's predicament. Swiftly uprooted and disposed of, it posed no further threat. Subsequently, no new cases emerged. And within a month, Susan made a full recovery. Eager once more to embark on future dates. Let's continue, greetings. Welcome to the channel's latest updates. New videos are uploaded daily. Adriana wrestled with heavy eyelids, struggling to coax them open. As she reached to stretch her stiffened back, her gaze flickered toward her watch. A mere half hour of sleep had graced her. A fleeting respite. Fortunately, the absence of any vigilant nurses spared her from the scrutiny of the head doctor, who was often prone to receiving reports, the orderlies, less attentive, seemed to overlook much of their duties, often dozing off during their shifts. They exhibited a lax approach, particularly during nocturnal hours when women were slated for childbirth. In such instances, Either the female staff willingly stepped in as an additional safety measure or were called upon by the understaffed nurses, Adriana. However, found herself in a different predicament. Uncomplaining and unnoticed. She contended with aches that racked her lower back. Reminiscent of an elderly person. Her days were consumed by relentless scrubbing. An arduous task that left her almost unbending, opportunities for work in her town were scarce for those lacking formal education. The budget department posed stringent criteria she couldn't meet. And the fees demanded for such positions were beyond her reach. Nevertheless, despite the toil, she harbored an unexpected fondness for her job at the maternity hospital. Adriana's affection for children stemmed from her own upbringing in an orphanage. She held steadfast dreams of a future adorned with a loving spouse, a large family, and perhaps, for cherished children. Memories of her unknown parents abandoning her lingered, fueling her determination to provide unwavering love and care to her own family one day, maybe even adopting a lively red-headed kitten as a companion. I in the interim, she remained dedicated to her duty of caring for expectant mothers. Ensuring the environment was impeccably sterile for the arrival of vulnerable newborns became her mission. Armed with a mop and a rag, she tirelessly maintained the hygiene standards essential for the infant's well-being, though Adriana recognized the significance of her role. Acknowledgement or appreciation was a rarity. She persisted silently, saving meager earnings, nurturing hopes of reapplying for a position in a year's time, perhaps. A slim chance at securing a spot within the budget constraints, her solitude was abruptly interrupted by the entrance of a nurse. Adorned with an air of pristine beauty reminiscent of a May rose. The nurse. A volunteer. Reminded Adriana of impending trouble if she lingered any longer in that space. A place where gratitude seemed absent. And acknowledgement was a luxury, silently conceding. 
Adriana nodded and retreated into the corridor. The maternity ward. Surprisingly serene. Echoed with soft sniffles from expectant mothers cradling their swollen bellies. An air of anticipation enveloped these women. Whose future babies slumbered peacefully within amidst this tranquil environment. Adriana. Armed with a bucket and rag. Commenced her cleaning duties. Her meticulousness set her apart from her colleagues who. With minimal effort. Merely feigned diligence. Despite her thoroughness. Her dedication often drew bemused looks and even reprimands from onlookers. Adriana's unwavering commitment continued in the face of adversity. Silently acknowledging the irony of her unseen efforts in a world that seldom appreciated the depth of her labor, the sanctity of work was paramount for her. Every task demanded meticulousness and dedication. Traits embedded deep within her nature. Betty. A buoyant presence. Rolled down the corridor like a merry ball. Beckoning Adriana. The nurse from the food pantry. To join her. Come and see us. Adriana. There's cereal and cocoa left. I bet you haven't had breakfast yet. Betty chimed. Flashing a friendly smile. Their relationship didn't transcend to friendship. Adriana kept a guarded distance from everyone. However. Betty. In her empathy. Felt a kinship towards the orphan girl. Always ready to extend a helping hand. Unflinching in the face of any task. Thank you. Adriana exclaimed joyfully. Genuinely hungry. That's the beauty of working here. You can save on breakfast sometimes. And leftovers from dinner. Well. Nobody minds in the evening, she added with a grateful tone with her chores completed. Adriana hastened into the kitchen. Procuring a plate of warm porridge adorned with a piece of butter and a cup of cocoa. The meal vanished swiftly as she sat under the kind gaze of Aunt Kathy. The culinary maestro ruling the canteen. Perhaps a refill. Aunt Kathy offered. Eyeing Adriana's slender frame with concern, Adriana hesitated momentarily. Then nodded appreciatively. If there are scraps. I'll bring them, she agreed. Acknowledging the kindness in Aunt Kathy's offer, a quick stroll into the secluded part of the hospital yard led Adriana to an improvised kennel. Meticulously arranged by the janitor for Sherrick. A stray dog that had wandered into the maternity hospital a month prior. Initially bedraggled and covered in weeds. Sherrick had been cared for. Fed. And eventually grew attached to the hospital grounds, Stephen. The janitor. Often grumbled but had put together a makeshift shelter for Sherrick from spare boards and pieces of slate. Adriana. Among others. Frequently brought food. And the grateful dog now recognized her. Wagging its tail exuberantly at the sight of the girl. As Adriana continued her routine. Carrying food for Sherrick. She was unexpectedly hailed by a hoarse voice from beyond the hospital fence. A man. Gaunt with hunger. Pleaded for help. His eyes reflected desperation. And tattered boots barely clung to his feet with makeshift ties. Honey. Give me a piece of bread. I've not eaten in two days, the man implored. His voice trembling, startled. Adriana nearly dropped the pot she was carrying. Her gaze darted around. Finally settling on the man sitting despondently on the ground without a moment's hesitation. She responded. Here. Eat. Placing the pot on the ground. The homeless man eagerly plunged his hands into the food. Devouring it voraciously. Driven by a primal hunger that had gripped him. His appearance. Worn and unkempt. Bore testament to his dire circumstances, Adriana looked on. Her heart pained by the sight. Despite the man's rugged appearance. His desperation resonated deeply within her. Adriana's heart churned with a mixture of emotions, compassion intermingled with discomfort, as she turned away from the homeless man. 
His abrupt pause. Mid-bite. Hinted that he realized how his desperate act might appear to an outsider. He held a piece of food and. In a moment of self-awareness. Implored Adriana not to judge. Musing about the possibility of having dined at lavish restaurants in the past. Now lost in the haze of hunger-induced desperation. Hunger erases memories. All thoughts are consumed by it, the man expressed. His voice strained by the weight of his plight. Thank you for not shunning me. Dear. May God bless you with a good husband. Sparing you the agony of starvation, he muttered gratefully, Adriana responded almost mechanically. Reclaiming the pot from the man's hands. Her tone carrying a detached politeness. Please. You must leave. If the janitor spots you. He'll call the police. He's rather strict, she urged. Concern etched on her face, the homeless man. Understanding her plea. Nodded in acknowledgement. I'll just sit here for a minute. Then I'll go. Don't worry, he assured. His voice carrying a tinge of resignation, Adriana hurriedly made her way back. Still clutching the pot. Her mind racing with conflicting thoughts. She empathized with the man's profound unhappiness. Contemplating the uncertainty of his claim about memory loss. Life. She pondered. Could throw unforeseen challenges that could alter one's reality. As she returned to the food pantry. A sudden realization struck her, she had inadvertently left Sherrick. The dog she cared for. Without his meal. Feeling remorseful. She gathered her courage and approached Aunt Kathy. The cook. Requesting more food for a reason she conjured hastily. I couldn't get to it. I stumbled on a stone and spilled everything in the dirt. Adriana fibbed. Feigning distress. Aunt Kathy. Flustered. Hurried to rectify the spilled food. Scolding Adriana for her clumsiness, anxiety plagued Adriana. Fearing another encounter with the homeless man. However. He seemed to have kept his word. Vanishing from sight. Relieved yet troubled. She returned to feed Sherrick. Trying to suppress feelings of guilt. Rationalizing that the food had served a greater need. Sherrick's exuberance upon seeing her dispelled some of her lingering unease. Adriana attempted to mask her inner conflict with muttered complaints. Despite her hand caressing the contented dog's ears, later. Amidst her bustling duties at the maternity hospital. Adriana finally found a sense of normalcy. However. As evening descended. Carrying rejected fish cutlets from the well-off expectant mothers. She embarked on her lonely journey back to her minuscule apartment in the periphery of the city. The weight of the day lingered as she navigated through the hospital's exit. Another solitary evening loomed ahead, a night spent in the quietude of her modest abode in the outskirts. A stark contrast to the world she traversed during her working hours. Adriana's recollection drifted back to the grandiose spectacle orchestrated by the mayor. An ostentatious event where she was ceremoniously handed the keys to what was publicized as her own mansion. The local press reveled in the affair even extending invitations to television crews. Yet. Reality revealed a stark contrast, the grandeur was but a facade for a small room within a decrepit. Five-story edifice that failed to entice even the most unassuming potential buyers, the crumbling building. Seemingly unsellable. Was begrudgingly given to Adriana. As legal constraints barred her from residing in the orphanage any longer. Despite its dilapidated state, it became her very own abode, accustomed to the regimented life in a dormitory where uniformity reigned supreme. Adriana embarked on a mission to refurbish her newfound dwelling. In a short span she miraculously transformed the ruins into a snub. Affectionately crafted sanctuary, while the resources barely covered the essentials. Adriana found solace in the simplicity. To her. The need for luxuries like a computer or a TV was superfluous. She discovered contentment in the modest pleasures, 
a phone doubling as a source of music and entertainment. Making the couch her haven for indulging in favorite movies. Primarily romantic tales of Cinderella's and their beloved princes rushing homeward. Her anticipation for a cozy dinner and a comforting cup of coffee was abruptly disrupted by a hoarse voice calling out to her. Startled. Adriana's entire being quivered as she realized the same vagrant had been waiting for her outside the gate. Unnoticed in her reverie, the man, towering and unattractive, loomed with a limp figure slung over his shoulder. Initially contemplating escape, Adriana found herself caught in a moment of vulnerability as the man staggered and nearly collapsed. Grasping the gate's iron beam for support despite her instinctual fear, an innate kindness spurred Adriana forward. With trepidation, she approached the obviously ailing man, peering into his worn face, swept by a surge of empathy and concern. Are you sick? What's happening? Is it your heart? Adriana inquired. Her concern palpable. Attempting to prevent the man from losing consciousness, slowly. He opened his eyes again and shook his head weakly. No just feeling very dizzy, he managed to articulate. A hint of regret in his voice. I'm sorry if I alarmed you again. That wasn't my intention. Honestly. Suggesting a visit to the hospital or calling for an ambulance. Adriana subtly sought a way to distance herself from the situation. Her genuine desire was to escape the discomfort and find solace. Perhaps on a comfortable couch. However, a sense of responsibility prevented her from walking away. She couldn't simply abandon someone in need. They might not let me on the doorstep, the man deflected. Brushing off the idea. Besides, I have no documents. And worse, I can't even recall my own name. Adriana suppressed her unease. Realizing he wasn't asking for anything. He simply stood there. Vulnerable and lost. Resembling a forlorn dog seeking help. His predicament struck a chord within her, the thought gnawed at her, local hospitals might refuse to extend aid to someone like him. Their apprehension to engage with a homeless man. Fearing damage to their reputation. Was a prospect she considered. Unsure if there was a shelter in town catering to people like him. Adriana felt the weight of responsibility settle on her shoulders. She knew that if she didn't intervene. No one else would come to his aid, thus. Adriana resolved to assist him. Attempting to convey confidence in her decision. Despite feeling uncertain and apprehensive herself. We're heading to my place for the night. You'll freshen up. Adriana stated firmly. Trying to assert authority. I have serious connections. And any trouble will be on you. Nothing's going awry for me anymore, she warned. Trying to intimidate the man, grinning. The homeless man reassured her. No need to worry about any mischief on my part. Truth be told. I can barely move my legs. I don't fear theft. I have nothing to steal, he added. Trying to allay her concerns, Adriana. Still harboring doubts despite her gesture of compassion. Urged. Let's go, her happiness at the situation questionable, nodding in gratitude. The homeless man followed Adriana onto the minibus. Attempting to maintain a sense of independence. However. The other passengers moved away from him. Visibly uneasy. His appearance. Resembling someone who had risen from the grave. Coupled with a lingering odor. Invoked discomfort among the commuters inwardly reproaching herself. Adriana wondered why she had intervened. She had fed him and felt empathy. Yet now she questioned her actions. She couldn't comprehend her decision to offer shelter to the homeless man. Perhaps it was due to her realization that most of her principled fellow citizens would have labeled the marginalized man as a disgrace. Prompting potential police involvement for disturbing public order. Moreover. 
His presence on the street was unpleasant for onlookers. I and her brief life experiences. Adriana had arrived at a stark realization, everyone looked out for themselves. If you're weak, you'll be pushed around by those who are stronger or more cunning, she contemplated. Reflecting on her life lessons, Adriana had learned to fight back against those she could confront. Yet she had mastered the art of evading those she couldn't handle, her time in the orphanage wasn't a nurturing haven with amiable caretakers and adorable children. It was a harsh academy of survival. Every taught lesson about life had been imprinted on her. Except for one, turning away someone in need. Despite being labeled as foolish by the nurses. Adriana was at peace with her conscience. Helping others was a principle she couldn't forsake, the homeless man. Exhausted. Struggled to ascend to the third floor. Several times he paused. Resting on the steps to catch his breath. While Adriana patiently waited. Knowing that the journey had sapped his strength, upon reaching her apartment. The homeless man entered. Leaning against the wall. Utterly drained. I'm dirty. All of me, he confessed softly. Voicing his need for a wash. Adriana swiftly slipped on her slippers and hurried to find clothing for her unexpected guest, considering his size. She settled on some of her shirts and t-shirts. Finally discovering a generously sized robe purchased at an incredibly low price during a sale. The makeshift blanket now transformed into an impromptu garment. Ensuring her own comfort. She contemplated listening to music without being seen, providing him the robe. She instructed. I'll turn on the water. There's soap and shampoo on the shelf. Put your clothes in the basket. I'll wash them. Then you can change into this. It's all I have. Her guest nodded gratefully. As Adriana left him in the bathroom. She fervently hoped he would manage the washing process without fainting. The thought of what she would do if he collapsed weighed on her mind. She doubted her ability to lift him in such a scenario, fortunately. Everything proceeded smoothly for Adriana. As she finished heating the cutlets provided by the cook and served them with yesterday's leftover pasta. The sound of running water in the bathroom ceased. The homeless man. Now fragrant with the scent of strawberry soap. Cautiously appeared in the kitchen. I'll wash these myself, he murmured quietly. Surveying the tiny room. I'm genuinely grateful to you. You saved my life. Adriana downplayed his gratitude. Placing a generous portion of food on his plate. She moved it closer to him. Let's have supper. I'm quite hungry myself, she admitted, the homeless man accepted the fork silently. Eating without haste. Trying not to appear too eager. Adriana observed his hands and found herself surprised. His fingers. Thin and slender with neatly kept nails. Struck her as unusual. They differed from the calloused hands of laborers or the neglected hands of those who had given up on self-care, curiosity piqued her. At least tell me your name, she prompted. Hoping to learn more about him. My name's Adriana. Struggling to detach himself from his meal. The homeless man spoke with difficulty. I could call you an angel. But you must have a very beautiful name. My name is. He hesitated. Pausing before continuing. Adriana. Her surprise was evident as she listened to him. Strange. Coming from you, she remarked. Noting the way he pronounced her name as if savoring its taste. He continued. Disregarding her comment. Your parents gave you a very fitting name. Adriana. They called me at the orphanage. He trailed off. I never knew my parents. Apparently. They didn't want to know anything about me either. I was a foundling. You're an angel, he proclaimed confidently. Disregarding any potential argument. Humans don't usually express such kindness. I'd like to introduce myself. But truthfully. I don't remember my name or anything about my past. 
Call me Benjamin, he proposed. Benjamin it is. Then. Adriana agreed. She mused about the necessity of knowing a stranger's name when he'd be gone from her life tomorrow. However. She accepted his chosen alias that he anticipated her concern. I'll make my bed on the floor. And I promise I'll behave, he assured her. Recognizing the limited options available in her small space, Adriana agreed. Assessing the room's possibilities. Considering her choices. She offered him a makeshift bed using her winter clothes covered by a sheet and a blanket, after Benjamin approved and settled down on the improvised bed. Adriana retreated. Changing into her tracksuit before sliding under the covers herself. She felt more secure in this attire. Prepared to escape if her unexpected guest harbored any untoward intentions, exhaustion overwhelmed her. And she drifted into sleep. Finding solace in the safety of her makeshift arrangements and the fatigue that shielded her from further contemplation, the dawn unveiled a sequence of unexpected events. Initially, she rose from the sofa, casting a discerning gaze upon her lodger, feeling a pang of unease at the sight. His unshorn head seemed to pulse against the pillow with an uncomfortable intensity, observing his flushed countenance. She called out. Benjamin. What have you been drinking? His eyes remained shut as he emitted a wheeze in response reacting swiftly. The girl fetched a glass of water and settled beside him. Briefly brushing his forehead as she passed. The touch revealed a fever coursing through him. She recoiled her hand instinctively. The heat emanating without the aid of a thermometer or further inspection of the medicine cabinet, her search yielded a sachet of medication. Pouring a dose into a cup. She brought it to the lips of the ailing man. Who eagerly imbibed without so much as a glance. He pleaded for more. Prompting her exasperated query. What am I to do with you? Adriana dashed around the apartment in a frantic quest for a towel. Eventually finding one and soaking it thoroughly. Placing it upon his burning forehead. She voiced her concern aloud. We should call a doctor. Benjamin. In a delirious state. Resisted vehemently. Gasping out. No doctor. Can't go. They'll find me. They'll kill me. With a feeble sigh. He dropped his head back onto the pillow recognizing the gravity of the situation. Adriana took a drastic step, a step never before ventured. She dialed the number of the head doctor. Pleading for time off. An entitlement she had never utilized despite accumulating a surplus. I think I'm sick. Fever, she uttered. Not entirely deceitful in her claim. Her temperature indeed rising in empathy with his, the chief doctor. Taken aback and genuinely concerned. Insisted. You can't possibly work with a fever. Take the time off. Rest over the weekend. You need three days to recover. Thank you, she managed before ending the call. Meanwhile. Benjamin's condition deteriorated visibly. Despite her efforts. He continued to shiver uncontrollably. Seeking warmth beneath a plate and later. Her blanket. But his trembling persisted. Manifesting in clenched teeth and tensed limbs. Adriana. Please keep me warm, his plea carried a note of desperation. For a fleeting moment. Disbelief lingered in her mind as she contemplated her actions. Eventually. She slipped under the blanket. Enveloping him in a comforting embrace. Whispering soothing words, remarkably. Within ten minutes. His distress began to ebb away. He stretched out. His breathing steadying. Adriana remained poised. Almost holding her breath. Prepared to retreat at the slightest indication. Yet. Her act of kindness and compassion had proven to be the most potent remedy. As the fever gradually abetted. A semblance of natural color returned to her face. Prompting Adriana to deem that the body could now take charge. 
She rose from her vigil beside Benjamin. Venturing into the kitchen to prepare a soothing herbal tea. Her intent was to offer something comforting for when he awoke. Hoping he might dismiss his ordeal as a figment of his imagination despite Benjamin's frailty and evident exhaustion. He exhibited an unexpected resilience. Throughout the day. Adriana attended to him tirelessly. Wiping away the copious sweat from his brow. Offering hydration. And maintaining a watchful eye over his condition. This arduous struggle against the ailment persisted until late into the night, around 11 p.m. Overwhelmed by fatigue. She succumbed to sleep. Unable to withstand further vigilance the following morning. A voice roused her from slumber. Startled and disoriented. Adriana scanned her surroundings. Momentarily perplexed by the sight of Benjamin standing by her bedside. Despite his pallor. There was a hint of levity in his demeanor. The kitchen exuded the aroma of something familiar and enticing. Sorry for being in the house. I didn't want to disturb your sleep, he apologized awkwardly, Benjamin had apparently made use of the bathroom. His long hair now neatly tied back. Adriana found herself struck by a passing thought of his resemblance to Antonio Banderas. Although it was an incongruous comparison in his current state, once more. She marveled at how articulately her guest could construct his sentences. Contrasting starkly with his earlier disheveled appearance. Musing over the peculiarities of the situation. She resolved to boil some water for tea. Acknowledging the need to freshen up, Benjamin excused himself to attend to the kitchen. Leaving Adriana to commend herself for having slept almost fully dressed. Hastily tidying her bed. She hurried to the bathroom. Noticing that her brush remained dry. Signaling that he had managed to maintain his distance from her belongings, after her swift ablutions. She ventured a peek into the kitchen. Greeted by an intoxicating aroma. It seemed Benjamin had whipped up a rather enticing breakfast, fried toast rubbed with garlic and crowned with scrambled eggs and greens, a concoction that spoke volumes about a bum's unexpected pursuit of aesthetic appeal amidst makeshift arrangements. Exquisite and sincere, she lauded the dish. Taking a mouthful and acknowledging its unexpectedly delightful taste. I know how to cook, remarked Benjamin casually. His focus on the meal before him. He ate with deliberate care. Handling his utensils with such natural ease that it was unmistakably a familiar routine for him. I must have frightened you a lot yesterday. I'm sorry, he offered. Looking up at Adriana. She couldn't help but notice the mesmerizing coffee-colored eyes framed by long, enviable eyelashes. I was afraid for you, she admitted. Concern evident in her voice. How do you feel now? Adriana inquired. Her worry palpable, Benjamin paused to assess himself. Shaking his head slowly. Incredibly weak. Dizzy. Hopefully. I'll be back on my feet in a couple of days, he responded with a hint of optimism. The only regret is that I still don't remember anything. But at least something should remain in my memory, he added with a touch of hope. Adriana earnestly endeavored to assist the unfortunate man who had unexpectedly crossed her path. I regained consciousness in the woods. It was dark. Damn. And I was covered in grime. Benjamin grimaced. His palm pressed against his forehead. My head felt like it was splitting open. I struggled to stand. Fell. Crawled. Found a stream. Drank. And washed my face and hands. Then I realized I had to find my way out as quickly as possible. Fearing I might weaken completely and become stranded in that forest forever. He continued. Recounting the harrowing experience. I made my way to the road. Tried to hitch a ride. But people avoided me as if I were a leper. After about ten failed attempts. Someone finally stopped. He was on his way to deliver groceries for the hospital and dropped me off near the fence. You know the rest, he concluded. 
looking up at Adriana, deep in thought after hearing his narrative. Adriana couldn't shake off the unsettling feeling that the story was incredibly peculiar. Almost certainly hinting at a criminal undertone. Benjamin. Are you involved in any criminal activities? Adriana's inquiry was direct. Her concern evident as she awaited his response. Benjamin strained his memory earnestly before admitting. I don't think so but a hint of surprise colored his admission. However. I somehow feel familiar with handling a gun. But that knowledge isn't significant. Shooting ranges and hunters often use them, he rationalized, concerned about potential missing person reports. Adriana swiftly scoured the internet on her phone. Searching for any resemblance to her guest. Disappointed by the lack of findings. She pondered whether he might be a con artist. Fabricating distressing tales to gain her trust. Yet realizing he had little to gain from her modest belongings. As she silently ruminated. She heard Benjamin's inner thoughts. Adriana. You'll drive me away. Raising her head. She encountered his eyes. Brimming with an unfathomable yearning and despair. Just rest for a couple of days. Then I'll try to sort things out if my memory returns, he suggested. They wanted to kill me. Benjamin uttered, prompting an involuntary plea from Adriana. Stay. She couldn't resist the pull of his coffee-colored eyes, seemingly endless in their depth. I won't be a burden, he assured, recalling the use of his hands. Despite the gravity of their situation, she smiled at his sudden eagerness to assist. You'd better lie down for a while, she advised firmly. I'll go to the drugstore. And we're also out of potatoes. Are you planning to go to the police, he inquired hopefully. I won't. Adriana responded. Though internally recognizing it as the most rational course of action. Don't tell anyone about me, he pleaded once more. Okay. Adriana acquiesced. Grabbing her bag and keys before reassuming. I won't be long just to the store and back. As she distanced herself from the house and settled on a bench, Adriana grappled with conflicting thoughts. You can't just leave someone to die in the woods. That's the real crime, one rational half of her reason. However, the other part couldn't help but reflect on how she had taken in this unknown man, offering him comfort and warmth. These actions were foreign to her typically reserved and self-sufficient nature, Adriana had lived a solitary life. Eschewing connections and intimacy. Growing up in an orphanage. She mastered the art of avoidance and self-defense. She had little time for frivolities or romantic entanglements. Always striving to earn a few extra cents. Her wardrobe remained simple. Though tidy. And she refrained from makeup. The very picture of practicality upon securing a job as a nurse at the maternity hospital. Adriana found herself utterly exhausted by evening. Collapsing from fatigue. Courtship seemed an alien concept to her. And gradually. She relinquished the notion of being a princess. A fantasy confined to fairy tales. She couldn't fathom committing herself to an arduous or overbearing man simply for the sake of companionship. The mere thought of a potentially abusive or alcoholic partner made her recoil. That wasn't the sort of happiness she desired, however. A sudden recollection of the breakfast Benjamin had prepared for her struck her. It was indeed delightful. And she couldn't deny the charm he exuded. Especially after he'd cleaned up. Dismissing these thoughts as nonsense. She reprimanded herself for entertaining them. He was unwell. And her priority was to provide him with a bit of care before letting him roam freely. Determined to stretch her meager funds. Adriana meticulously picked out affordable vegetables during her shopping trip. Her purse feeling the strain with the paycheck still distant. A visit to the drugstore to purchase the cheapest antibiotics nearly depleted her savings. Leaving her heart heavy as she returned home, anxiety gnawed at her.
what chaos awaited her upon arrival. Would Benjamin have absconded? Taking household items with him. Leaving behind an open door and a sense of foolishness. Yet. The comical image of him scurrying around in her robe. Throwing his socks into the washing machine. Momentarily lifted her spirits. As she opened the door. Relief washed over her upon hearing the hum of the washing machine. Inside. Benjamin was in the kitchen. Seated on the floor. Attending to something beneath the sink. His beaming smile greeted her as he diverted his attention from his task. I tried fixing it. It was dripping. Tidied up a bit too. Is that all right, he chimed in. Visibly pleased with his efforts setting the bags down. Adriana surveyed the scene. In her absence. This unexpected lodger had tidied up the place. Doing dishes. Cleaning the floors. And remarkably. The ancient refrigerator seemed to purr contentedly. Quite the handyman, she remarked. Surprised at his resourcefulness. You seem to know your way around things. Even if you're not exactly a plumber, she added with a chuckle as Benjamin playfully wrinkled his nose, his competence contradicted her preconceived notions of unassuming vagrants. She hesitated to attribute him solely to that category of society. Leaving her contemplating another possibility, criminality, reluctant but compelled to know. She asked hopefully. Anything else you recall? The cheerful glimmer in Benjamin's eyes dimmed as he shook his head. Just the forest. The ravine. And the chilling cold, he mumbled. Offering no further revelations. I must have taken a bad beating. If only I knew why. Benjamin sighed. A hint of frustration evident in his voice. Adriana. Her hands pressed to her chest. Voiced her genuine desire to aid him. Though she confessed her uncertainty about how to assist further. Have you already helped? Adriana. You've shown me kindness that others wouldn't have dared, bringing a sick. Unkempt man into your home. Benjamin expressed with gratitude that touched Adriana deeply. I believe you're mistaken. Adriana countered. Her posture suggesting a broader faith in humanity. The world isn't devoid of good people. And maybe someone with ill intentions tried to discard you, she mused. Acknowledging the enigmatic cruelty of the situation. Yes. Benjamin nodded. A solemn silence enveloping the space. Adriana. Resolute. Gestured towards her bag. Retrieving medicine to aid his recovery. Her stern demeanor momentarily surprised Benjamin. Prompting a laugh from him. Acknowledging her lapse in memory. As Adriana observed him sipping the brewed concoction. A surprising tranquility settled within her. She realized she had never felt as composed as she did now. Despite the unexpected intrusion of this mysterious man. Was he truly a destitute soul? Or was there more to his story that he lacked a place to call home and suffered from amnesia? But his demeanor hinted at a better upbringing than someone accustomed to life on the streets. Despite the circumstances. He exhibited a courtesy and willingness to help that surpassed common expectations. And to her chagrin. Adriana couldn't help but notice his undeniable physical attractiveness, lean but toned. With striking facial features and captivating eyes, such a man. She pondered. Must have succumbed to tragedy rather than willfully descending into destitution. Benjamin. Noticing her preoccupied expression. Interrupted her reverie. Prompting her nearly truthful response about wanting to uncover his true identity. You declined involving the police. And it appears your acquaintances aren't searching for you. Adriana stated. Her thoughts spilling out. Benjamin gently placed his hand on hers. Urging her understanding. Forgive me, he implored. Meeting her gaze with intensity. It's better if they assume I'm gone for now. I'll remember everything and re-emerge when the time is right. Otherwise... 
someone might face trouble, he concluded. The weight of his words hanging heavily in the air. Hinting at an underlying strength and confidence that startled Adriana, caught in the intensity of the moment. She watched as Benjamin's countenance softened into a smile. Adriana. Remember. I will never harm you or let anyone hurt you. There's no need to fear me. Benjamin reassured her earnestly. Catching her off guard with such an unprecedented promise. And you know what? Since I've unintentionally become your lodger. Take a break from chores today. I'll handle the cleaning and cooking, he offered warmly, Adriana was astounded. No one had ever extended such consideration to her before. Will you brighten up my life? Benjamin asked in a genuinely serious tone. I'll do it. Adriana replied. Slightly taken aback but intrigued by the prospect, true to his word. Benjamin meticulously cleaned the dishes. Old cabinets. And the entire room. Transforming the space into a gleaming haven. As enticing aromas wafted from the kitchen. Adriana found herself seated on the couch. Reveling in music. And contemplating the unforeseen turns her life had taken, apart from Aunt Kathy from the food pantry. No one had shown her such care. She couldn't help feeling like royalty in her own home. Adriana chided herself for being swayed by these emotions. Knowing well that Benjamin. A transient with amnesia. Would soon exit her life. However. An inexplicable newfound faith and optimism eclipsed these rational thoughts. I feel remarkably content now, she admitted to herself. Struggling to remain seated instead of rushing to assist Benjamin in the kitchen. The enticing aroma of the meal filled the air. Accompanied by his cheerful humming. Adding to the odd charm that was Benjamin, Adriana admitted to herself that she was genuinely thrilled about the turn of events. This unexpected twist felt like an adventure. One that might hold regrets later on. But that was a concern for the future. The meal is served. Benjamin announced merrily. Appearing with a makeshift tray. He had prepared fried potatoes and a salad that exuded a delightful aroma. Inviting Adriana to the table, regally. She walked over. But her composure gave way to laughter and shining eyes. It looks wonderful. Thank you, she expressed her gratitude as Benjamin regarded her seriously. You're my savior, he continued. And Adriana blushed at his words. You make it sound like I truly saved your life. Not just provided you with a place to stay, she countered. You did more than that. Benjamin insisted. You restored my faith in people. In goodness. And justice, he articulated. Leaving her momentarily speechless. Without further ado. She grabbed her fork. Indulging in the delicious meal he had transformed into a culinary masterpiece. Let's dance. Benjamin suggested. Adding another unexpected turn to the evening. The invitation hung in the air. Enticing Adriana into an unforeseen and joyous moment after they finished their meal. Adriana was startled by her own abrupt honesty. Where did you learn to dance like that, she questioned. Genuinely puzzled. Dancing lessons at the orphanage existed. But it seemed unlikely that Benjamin had picked up those fond moves at such an establishment. I'll teach you how to use your phone. Benjamin offered. Reaching for her cell phone as Adriana handed it over. Within moments. He scrolled through various music sites. Selecting a captivating tune. Extending his hand. He invited her to join him. And she found herself enchanted by the prospect. As she moved in rhythm with his steps. Adriana felt a sense of liberation. Initially stiff. She eased into the dance. The touch of his hand on her waist transforming her discomfort into an entirely new sensation. An inexplicable warmth coursed through her veins. Leaving her head spinning softly. She pondered whether it was the wine. Though there had been no alcohol on the table. 
attributing the feeling to something else entirely, their dance seemed to unite them in a feeling of extraordinary beauty and desirability. Held closer and closer. She sensed his heartbeat in sync with hers. His gaze fixated on her without wavering. In that moment, she comprehended his thoughts and desires. Sensing his readiness to halt if she so wished. Yet, the bridges were already crossed. And when his fervent lips met hers, she disregarded reason and surrendered to the moment what followed felt like a tapestry woven of passion and tenderness. Benjamin's touch was gentle and restrained. Though Adriana knew he was holding back his fervor. It was a beautiful moment she wished would linger, they eventually reclined side by side on her worn-out couch. Silence enveloping them. Words seemed superfluous. Merely being together sufficed. Adriana felt an overwhelming sense of contentment as they lay there. As if their mere presence beside each other was enough. You're an incredible girl. Benjamin spoke softly. And Adriana sensed the sincerity in his words. I'll never forget you. Believe me. Adriana's happiness faded. Replaced by a sudden sadness. She didn't want this man to exit her life. He sat up. Turning toward her. Expressing his inevitable departure. I need to leave. I have to rediscover who I am and what happened to me. I must sort out my life and bring justice to those responsible. Benjamin explained earnestly that he didn't want to endanger her and promised that everything would be fine once he returned. A conviction in his voice that made her want to believe him. Despite the uncertainty. He leaned in. Kissing her once more. They spent the rest of the day together. Conversing. Listening to music. And laughing. Reveling in the magic of the moment that IT was an incredible night filled with passion. Embracing heat. And soft whispers that left both of them entwined. Happy. And overflowing with desire. But as morning broke. Adriana woke up to an empty space beside her. The warmth that lingered on the bed was the only remnant of his presence. She sighed. Realizing her fairy tale had concluded abruptly. He was gone without a trace. There were no farewell notes or unnecessary words. He had vanished as abruptly as he had appeared. Now. She had to continue with her life, Adriana resigned herself to the routine of the day. Preparing for work despite the hollow feeling within her. The holidays had ended. And the regular workdays had resumed. Engulfing herself in work was a coping mechanism. A distraction to evade thoughts of what had transpired and the unlikelihood of its recurrence, throughout the day. She went about her duties in a silent daze. Eating mechanically and feigning composure. Concerned inquiries from Aunt Kathy and even the head doctor were met with forced smiles. She found solace in her solitude. Realizing most colleagues neither cared nor comprehended her inner turmoil. To them. She was just another nurse with a complicated life, the evening brought a visit to Sherrick. Carrying a pot of leftovers. Overwhelmed. Adriana burst into tears. Pouring out her grievances to the sympathetic dog. Her anguish spilled out, her loneliness. Her hardships. The longing for connection, relaying her tale to her faithful companion. As days passed. Adriana's life persisted in its grayscale routine. Her shifts at work continued. The number of babies in the maternity ward increased. But nothing changed for her. She waited. Unknowingly. For a sign of Benjamin's return. But he seemed to have vanished into thin air. Leaving an unsettling void, his absence weighed heavily on her. She contemplated her existence. Wondering why fate had been so unkind. Questions plagued her mind about her past. Her abandonment. And why she couldn't seem to climb out of poverty. Thoughts of Benjamin's departure lingered. Her belief in his words gradually slipping away, she began questioning her own memory. Rationalizing that perhaps she had imagined his noble gestures. 
finding it hard to reconcile his courteous demeanor with that of a destitute man. The feeling of emptiness grew. And she grappled with self-doubt and the lingering notion that she must have fabricated it all, days turned into an obsession with uncertainties and self-blame. Adriana was gripped by the thought that maybe she was responsible for his departure. Furthering her spiral into self-doubt and despair point one day. The girl couldn't bear it any longer and asked to visit a gynecologist. A mandatory procedure for all staff. It was time for her checkup. And the most challenging moment came when stern Clara began the examination. Quietly humming. During the examination. It was discovered that Adriana had lost her virginity. But Clara. Being professional. Refrained from making any jokes. Adriana was sure Clara thought she was discreet, however. What Clara said after the examination shocked Adriana, congratulations. Adriana. You're pregnant. I hope the father-to-be will be happy. The girl froze in her chair. Bewildered at how this could have happened. She understood well enough. They had been careful, the gynecologist noticed Adriana's sudden change in behavior and realized this wasn't the way to proceed. Adriana. Quietly. Asked directly about abortion. Afterward. She stood up. Adjusting her clothes. Feeling dizzy and confused about her future. Would she be able to live with herself if she opted for an abortion? If she kept the baby? How would she cope? She bid goodbye to the hope of a future life. A brighter one. Interesting. We'll meet a man who will take care of her. Clara hurried her up. I will have my baby. I love him already. Adriana whispered under her breath. The doctor nodded. Advising her not to delay if she changed her mind. To which Adriana firmly replied. I won't change my mind. At home. She cried into her pillow. Mourning the loss of her dreams. Eventually. She placed her hand on her stomach. Finding a bit of solace. And whispered. Do not be afraid. I won't leave you. There are two of us now. Little one. And we'll make it. Clara whispered to herself. She deserved credit for her discretion. She wasn't one to gossip and knew how to keep a doctor's secret. Understanding that all secrets eventually surface despite Adriana's attempts to conceal her growing belly beneath loose clothing. The experienced eyes of the nurses made it impossible to hide. Whispers circulated behind her back. And her aunts fell silent upon her arrival. Exchanging meaningful glances. One day. Unable to bear the tension. Aunt Kathy sarcastically questioned her. Who got you pregnant? Dear. I doubt you've had a man in your life. Or is there something we don't know? Adriana awkwardly joked. That's right. The wind's blowing strangely. This conversation weighed heavily on her. And perceptive Aunt Kathy sensed her distress. Pulling her into a warm embrace. Oh. My dear. It's all right. We'll manage. Aunt Kathy comforted as Adriana. Unable to contain herself. Cried while clinging to the kind woman who stroked her hair and offered reassuring words, Aunt Kathy went further than words. She approached the head doctor. Speaking on Adriana's behalf. Consequently. Adriana was summoned by the stern-looking head doctor. Who. Peering over his glasses. Declared. Starting tomorrow. I'm transferring you to the canteen. No more heavy lifting. I don't want any risks of miscarriage in the workplace. Unable to contain his curiosity. He continued. Adriana. You. The quiet one. How did this happen? Observing her about to cry. He swiftly shifted his tone. Don't worry. Everything will be all right. Take maternity leave. It's best for you to rest. We'll keep your job secure. 
you've been working tirelessly. Overwhelmed. Adriana threw herself into the chief's embrace. And he gently patted her back. Murmuring consoling words. It's all right. My dear. Such things happen in life. You're not the first. Nor will you be the last. Adriana shook her head. Crying even louder. The overseeing doctor sighed. Please don't cry. I said we'll assist you. The following day. Adriana started working in the canteen. It was a more comfortable environment. She wasn't afraid of the work. Was treated well. Enjoyed delicious meals. And. Most importantly. Wasn't subjected to gossip or intrusive questions, gradually. Adriana began to ease the pain in her soul. Though it didn't vanish entirely. Determined. She decided to live for the future child. To her. Motherhood meant happiness. And she was determined to be the best mother she herself had never had. Her child would know love. Never feel deprived. And be deeply cherished, the baby seemed to understand her feelings. Behaving perfectly. Suddenly. Her morning sickness stopped. And Adriana's health improved. Her once thin face became rounder. Her skin seemed to radiate. But her most striking feature was her eyes, filled with love and tenderness. Focused inward toward her future child, Adriana transformed visibly and beautifully. Becoming unrecognizable in her newfound happiness. Aunt Kathy, observing her closely, remarked. You've blossomed. My dear. I just wish you had a good man. Time passes. But where to find a good one? As time progressed, the baby in her belly grew, making its presence known by little movements. Adriana comforted her unborn child, sensing somehow that it would be a boy. She affectionately named him Benjamin. Benjamin, you mustn't trouble yourself. My dear, let your mother work a bit longer. I'll read you a story later, she whispered, Adriana nurtured a deep bond with her unborn son. Expressing her hopes and dreams for him. Shedding tears of both joy and concern. Long before the baby's arrival. She became a wonderful mother. Reading bedtime stories and singing lullabies. She meticulously ensured her diet was healthy for the baby's growth. Yet she delayed taking maternity leave. Avoiding solitude and melancholic thoughts, finally. A resolute decision from her chief doctor mandated her maternity leave. Urging her swift return while wishing her well. We'll manage without you. Adriana. But finding another worker like you is impossible. We'll wait, the head doctor sighed. Visibly embarrassed. And handed her an envelope. Here. We've collected this with heartfelt wishes for your baby. Adriana felt a pang of empathy. Hugged him. And kissed him on both cheeks. With a gentle push from the head doctor. She was ushered toward the door. God willing. Everything will work out. Have a blessed time ahead, he murmured, the moment when her baby fervently demanded entry into the world caught Adriana by surprise. Although the maternity hospital staff were well-versed in childbirth, Adriana was unexpectedly overwhelmed by the pain. Contraction seized her body. And with urgency, she gathered her prepared belongings into a bag and managed to make it to the courtyard to meet the ambulance that had been summoned, the subsequent events were a blur. She recalled intermittent waves of excruciating pain and the midwife's instructions to push. Struggling. Adriana aided the birth. Bringing her baby into the world then. The most beautiful sound reached her ears, the cry of her newborn. Benjamin. Holding the little bundle close to her chest. Adriana gazed into his coffee-colored eyes. Overwhelmed by a wave of love. I love you. My son, she whispered. Feeling as though the baby smiled back at her throughout her stay in the maternity hospital. 
Adriana experienced sheer happiness. Her fellow patients rushed in with congratulations. Bearing gifts and treats. Those moments became her lifeline. Cherishing the enchanting scent and warmth of her newborn against her chest. Feeling the sweet language of his suckling on her breast, finally content. Adriana eagerly anticipated the day of discharge. Yearning to return to her familiar environment. She desired solitude with Benjamin. Sensing that something remarkable was on the horizon that night, though she couldn't quite explain this newfound confidence, carefully tidying her hair. Adriana caught the curious gaze of her young roommate. A girl even younger than herself. The new roommate. Pregnant and relatively unaware of Adriana's journey. Looked on with interest. Adriana comforted her. Assuring that everything would be alright during her own childbirth. You're incredibly beautiful. Adriana, declared the young neighbor. You're fortunate. Your husband is probably on his way. Bringing a bouquet for you. Adriana smiled. Concealing her emotions. She contemplated why the girl needed to know her story. Aware that the neighbor had her own happy tale unfolding. There had been a guy shouting her name from beneath the window the previous day. Persistently waiting until she appeared. Thankfully. The janitor. Stephen. Intervened. Reminding him of the need for quiet around the neighborhood. Of course. Lucky. Adriana replied. Kissing the neighbor's cheek. Don't fear anything. The baby senses everything. Soon. You'll be holding her. Thank you. Sincerely wishing you happiness, the neighbor responded. Yet. Adriana was nervous when crossing the hospital threshold with her baby in her arms. Her heart raced. Causing concern even to the nurse seeing her off. Adriana. Are you sure you're alright? Should we wait or arrange a car to send you home, the nurse asked. Noticing Adriana's pale complexion. No. I'll be fine. Adriana reassured her, stepping into the bright. Sunny day. Adriana relished the fresh air. Though she felt a bit dizzy. Her fear of stumbling was alleviated as strong arms lifted her and the baby. A familiar voice whispered in her ear. My darling. Hello. I'm here. Finally. I'm sorry it took so long. Adriana felt as though she was dreaming. The vaguely familiar man. Resembling Benjamin but a stranger to her. Stood amidst the hospital courtyard filled with flowers and expensive vehicles. We have a son, she announced. Yes. What's his name, he asked. Benjamin, she whispered. Overcome with emotion. Benjamin. Did you really come back, she asked incredulously. Yes. I'm back for good. I truly want to hold my son, he replied. Tears welling in his eyes. Please. You may. Adriana said. Handing him the baby. The man leaned over. Trembling with overwhelming emotions. And spoke to the infant. Hello. Benjamin. I am your father. The baby responded with happiness. And Benjamin. Looking at Adriana. Was filled with emotions he couldn't contain. Will you marry me? Benjamin asked. Realizing Adriana's unspoken thoughts. I know nothing about you, she wanted to say. But he interrupted. We'll have plenty of time for that. For now. Let's go home. My place isn't tidy. Adriana sensed she was speaking nonsensically. Yet she couldn't stop. We'll go to our house, she insisted. Seriously. Benjamin explained. I've prepared the nursery as best as I could. If it's not to your liking. You can redecorate it. And these people are our friends. They've been a tremendous help. Who are you? Adriana asked. Bewildered. And who are all these people? 
I am me. And they are our friends. Benjamin clarified. They've supported me a lot. Especially in picking you up today. Why haven't you heard from me? He calmly continued. Because I was released from jail only yesterday. Adriana tried to get rid of me persistently. But thanks to friends and a good lawyer. It's all over. I'm clean before the law. Will you marry me? I think I'd marry you even if you were a bum. Adriana replied sincerely. I told you. You were a saint. Benjamin responded seriously as they sat side by side in the spacious jeep. Adriana cradling a peacefully sleeping Benjamin, Adriana closed her eyes. Hoping it wasn't a dream. Benjamin sensed her thoughts. Hugged her gently. And whispered. I'll do anything to make you happy. I'm not a prince. A bandit. Or a magician, just a businessman who the competition thought was too lucky. They tried to eliminate me. But fate was on my side. He recounted how he narrowly escaped adversaries who wanted to harm him. Explaining his unexpected disappearance and his recent legal troubles. But it's all over now, he assured Adriana. Turning to her. I love you and our son immensely. I know the value of hard work and that the only worthwhile expense is for the happiness of family. Fear nothing. Adriana. I'll always be there for you. And I promise everything will be alright. Adriana leaned against Benjamin. Feeling overwhelmed by the rapid succession of events. Reminiscent of scenes from a movie. At that moment. She desired nothing more than a long drive in the exquisite and comfortable car. Accompanied by the soothing sound of his son's sleeping breath, could there be anything more beautiful than this? Adriana pondered. Only to realize that there indeed was. As she stepped into the vast mansion and beheld the nursery she had lovingly prepared. And later. When they were finally alone. Adriana stood gazing at Benjamin as if seeing him anew. Trying to etch this moment into her memory forever. Honey. You're looking at me in a way that makes me doubt, remarked Benjamin. Unable to resist teasing her, Adriana laughed. Walking over to him. Maybe I preferred you without the lavish setup, she quipped. Adding softly. If only you knew how many nights I spent wrapped up in memories of your scent. We have endless time ahead of us. And it's up to us to fill it. Benjamin responded with a smile. Come to me. My love. Because I won't let you go anywhere else, he urged. Drawing her close. Enveloping her in tender kisses. In that moment. Adriana realized that this kind of genuine. All-encompassing happiness existed not only in fairy tales.